Hi and welcome. Uh, in this video I want to talk about something that's very important and those are significant figures. They're so critical in communicating to other scientists the accuracy and precision with which you are able to record your data. So to do that we're going to use significant figures, sometimes called significant digits. So significant figures, I, I just call them sig figs. So on my test, my students may see me write SF, and that means you have a sig fig error, all right? So it starts with first being able to measure to the correct number of significant figures. And then later on, looking at how you handle mathematical operations with those digits with the whole goal in mind is we don't want to communicate to other scientists that our measuring device was either better than or less than what it truly was able to do. So when you do this, we always report all certain digits. If it is something like a ruler or a graduated cylinder, the certain digits are marked by a lab. Okay, we always then report one uncertain digit. Okay, the uncertain digit, if there's lines, you're estimating between the lines. If it's a balance, your last digit will fluctuate. And it's that last digit that is uncertain. You might have to grab a five or a three or two or, you know, it's going to go flip-flopping back and forth and you're just going to estimate and grab what you see the most of, okay? Now, what if it's on the line? If you're estimating between the lines, what if you're estimating that it's on the line? You're still estimating that it's right on the line and so you have to add a zero, okay? So we always want to measure and report numbers to the correct significant figures with units. So the first step, if you have something with lines, if it's a balance, you're just reading the numbers. But the first thing we want to do is define the lines. Okay, so here the large line is the one place, so it goes one, two, three. So that differs by the, in the ones place. That means the small lines in between differ by the tenths place. Okay, so that means that we're going to go one digit be beyond what the lines define and we're going to go to the hundredths place. So you define the lines and go one more than that. All right, so let's look at this letter A here. Well, let's do C, it's a little easier. I know it's greater than one, but less than two. So I'm gonna put a one there and I know that for sure there's a line to tell me that. Then it's one, two, three, four, five. Well, I know it's greater than the five, but less than the six. And I know that because there's a line that tells me that. Well, now I have to do some estimating. It's not quite six. Is it six, you know, or it's not quite um, six here. So is it five, seven? Is it five, eight? Is it five, nine? Well, different people would estimate that differently and that's understood. So I would write that down as 1.57 centimeters. I'm not gonna do all of these. Let me just do two more. And um, let's go ahead and do B. So this was C, right? So let me go ahead and do B. So it's less than one, so I'm gonna put a zero there because I know it's less than one. And then I can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's greater than seven, but less than eight. But I know for sure that that's a seven and it's not an eight. And now I have to estimate between those lines, it's closer to the eight than the seven. So I'm gonna call that 0 0.78 centimeters. Bear in mind, that that eight is our uncertain or estimated digit. All right, let's take a look at D. So for D, I know it's greater than two, but less than three. One, two, three, four, five. 
you know, that looks to me like it's right on the line, but it might not to somebody else. Somebody may say, call that 2.49. Somebody may call that 2.51. I'm going to say, you know what, I think it's on the line, so I'm going to put a zero there. Once you've determined that this has to be to the hundreds place, every number has to be reported to the hundreds place. Okay, so if you define your lines, that can help you make sure you're reporting everything to the correct number of significant figures. Now let's look at a graduated cylinder. You have to be careful with these. They're not a nice firm line like a ruler. Um, with water, we end up with an upward curve. With mercury, you actually have a downward curve. But this is called a meniscus. And for any aqueous base that you'll be dealing with, we're always going to want to measure at the bottom of that meniscus. So in both of these, we're going to read it at the bottom of the meniscus. So let's first define our lines. This is 30, and that's 40. So we know we've got the tens place covered. Each of the small division is the ones place. So that means we always estimate one more digit than what is defined. So we're going to go to the tenths place here. So in this case, I know it's 20 and not 30. So I know I've got a two there. Then I can go up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I know it's greater than seven, but less than eight. All right, now comes the estimation here. Um, I'm going to call that a 3. You might have called that a 4. Okay, and I put milliliters. Okay, this next one, it's greater than 30 but less than 40. So I've got a 3 in the tens place. 1, 2, 3, 4. It's really close to that 5. And I'll be honest, I think it's right on that line. You may not think so. Um, that's why it's called an uncertain digit. So I'm going to call that 35.0 milliliters. Burettes are very important. Um, burettes are designed to deliver. So at the base of this burette, you would see what's called a stopcock with, you know, there'd be this little stopcock that you could turn and things would drip out the bottom of it, right? And so you would deliver into an Erlenmeyer flask or a beaker. And what's important is they read down. Okay, So if we look between this division and this division, that's going in the ones place. So that means the smallest division, the smallest division defined by a line is the tenths place. So that means we're going to record these to the hundreds place, hundreds place, okay? But remember, you're reading down. Don't try to subtract from 50. You read it exactly as it is on the burette. So in this case, I know that it's below the 24, but above, or excuse me, below the 23, but above the 24. So I know it's 23 point something. And again, you read at the bottom of the meniscus. So I have 23.1234. It's between the three and the four. I'm going to call that a three. It's not quite all the way down to the four. So I'm going to call that about a three nine milliliters. Okay, if you read that according to the bottom of the meniscus. Now, um, let's look at the next one. 28, it's between 28 and 29, so I'm going to put 28. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's a, below the 8, but not quite to the 9. So I'm going to call that 28.89. Okay, now what is common is now to, to determine what was delivered. Now, this is your raw data. You must show this data in your data tables. The amount delivered 
out of the bottom of the burette, it started here and we drained it till it got to here, is always your final 28.89 minus your initial 23.39 and I get 5.00 milliliters were delivered, um, 5 .5, excuse me, 5.50 milliliters delivered. I thought that number didn't look right. 5.50 milliliters. Remember, this went to the hundreds place, so my answer needs to go to the hundreds place. Okay, so that's a brief introduction in terms into how to actually determine how many significant figures to report when you're measuring quantitative data. Thanks for joining me.